Hi, I wanted to introduce you to uh, the kit. So if you got the kit from me, um, it should come in this uh, clear box. It's a double-sided case that um, I just got from Container Store, and um, I think they'll still have them there. But um, on one side, um, I have stored the launch pad and uh, the cable, breadboard, and um, optional screen. And on the other side, I stored all of the additional components. So um, I just want to go through and um, kind of let you meet each part of the components that you'll be using and so you can play with it while we wait for the course to start. So the first side I like to start with is the launch pad side, of course. So inside should be um, your launch pad. Um, I just I kept the bag on it. This is called an ESC bag and it's to protect your uh, launch pad, the components on it from static electricity. So static electricity has been known, or ESD is known to actually damage electronic components. So this particular um, bag is to help um, protect from that. It's not all inclusive, so um, don't you know go crazy and move in and out, move in and out, and try and create static. But um, it's just an extra precaution. Um, I actually have never really lost a board to ESD so um, but it is an extra precaution that I would um, I wanted to give you the option to have so I kept that in there. Um, the other part is that if you got the optional screen um, here's the Nokia 5110 screen and um, the optional screen I store it right here and then there's your breadboard and then um, this little com pocket here, uh, because the long component, the long compartment was taken with breadboard wires, I just took the cord um, that comes with the launch pad and folded it up and tucked it in here. Okay. So we'll do a little more in detail with that. So we'll close this side and take a look at the other one. And this side is kind of where um, all of the components are. So, um, of course, here are your breadboard wires that go with the breadboard, and so as the course starts, um, it comes nicely wrapped, but you'll have them every which way. Um, I embarrassingly have an entire, I can show you, um, this is uh, my own personal breadboard wire uh, kit, lots and lots of them, so it, they do get messy. Um, so this is my attempt to try and help you uh, keep them nice and neat. Um, these are your resistor values, and um, please go through and check that you actually should have uh, six, uh, six tabs of them, and they're all tied together with max mas masking tape. Um, this is where I put out all your LEDs. Uh, you should have six, uh, two of each color. Um, there is an audio jack. And uh, this is a small slide pot. It's a little smaller than what the course required, but I checked with the professor and um, this should be okay. And then you should have four buttons. And, and these buttons are commonly uh, found buttons that you can uh, use breadboards and things. So take a moment, push it. So, uh, uh, take some time, get to know your kid a little bit. Um, one of the things I usually recommend students to do is to familiarize yourself with how a breadboard works. And I will post a quick uh, link to a tutorial on a breadboard. But your breadboard will be the main part of it. And so some of the things you can do to get to know your breadboard is um, Some of the things you can do to get to know your breadboard is uh, take out the components and you know kind of see if you can fit them on there nicely. So uh, if you notice, this uh, slide slider has a little bend right there, so um, you might want to bend it back and um, see if you can fit it into the holes. There we go. So you know, that's how the slider pot works. Uh, buttons. So um, sometimes uh, it's good. I like to straddle buttons across kind of the divide right here. So place buttons in there. You want to see how that works. So, anyways, so sliders. Um, I'm sure you've seen dimmer switches in houses. This is very similar. 
Um, a twisty one is called a rotary slider, like a rotary pot. This is a linear pot. So anyway, it's a potentiometer. And then of course you can spot many buttons that you have, but putting it in the breadboard is a little more solid. Let me take this out. You can uh, try your audio jack in. And you can even plug in your um, headphones and test it out, see how solid that is on there. Um, you can put the rest of your buttons in and you know test out, you know, test out what it would be like to have two buttons. Okay. Um, with the resistors, uh, unless you need them, um, I would keep them, but here's a free resistor I just had on the table. Um, I would recommend you read up. Um, you'll cover it in the course, but nothing can um, nothing can hurt. But you can read up on uh, reading the color codes on a resistor. Uh, that'll be handy. And then um, LEDs. So you can kind of feel, uh, take a look at LEDs, uh, learn a little bit about LEDs. There's a positive and there's a negative in there. See if you can tell which one is positive or negative. Um, if you have a coin cell battery, you know, maybe a battery that you uh, got out of a, your watch or something, you can actually light it up and test it. So um, here we go. So um, just by testing it. So this is where you can see the positive and the negative. And um, I'll try and provide a link on um, some fun LED things. You want to be careful with your LEDs. You can blow them up. And um, if you blow them up, then you'll have a less than ideal traffic, uh, uh, less than ideal traffic um, thing. If you don't have a coin cell battery, but you have a regular battery, um, something that um, you might want to do is to test out your LEDs. Grab the red LED because it requires the least voltage and um, put one end into the breadboard on one side and put another end over here. Plug that in. And then um, take two um, breadboard wires. Let's keep things consistent. And I'll take a blue one. Let's see if I can get it out of this. Um, to the negative, and then I want a red one, and I'm going to put it to the positive. So um, there's positive, and that's negative. So I didn't actually plug it into the rails, but that's an aside. And so if you have a battery, just a regular battery um, out of something, you can actually test out a red LED and build your first circuit. So um, you can, um, because a battery is only one point, I believe it's only 1.5 volts. So it's a very, very low voltage um, on its own. You might not be able to see it light up when you touch the ends on it. So positive to negative, if that's the case, you might want to turn the light off and try again. You see, just barely it lights up. Let's see if I can make it more drastic. Okay, I'm taking the ends, touching it to the battery. You see. There it is. 
tiny red dot. <laughs> that's the battery. So anyways, uh, that's the LED. It's much more impressive in person. It's harder to see that when you, when it's, um, when it's on camera. But see, it's on, it's off, it's on. So anyways, you can experience, um, that simple circuit. Turn on the light. So anyways, um, if you wanted to kind of get an experience a little more with uh, LEDs, um, I can um, post a different tutorial, but um, it's fun to kind of test things out and see um, where they are. But uh, your battery, uh, your microcontroller board, this isn't the same one that I just showed you, but the microcontroller board actually has uh, inputs on here. Uh, for positive and, and negative. So here is one that's 3.3 volts and ground and ground is a good way is um, also for negative. So this blue wire. So anyways, so there's a positive and a negative and so you'll learn more about that in the course. So I hope that was helpful and um, yeah, get to know your kit, play around with it, get to know the components.